and welcome everyone to the Daryl Ma Show. It's that special time of year again. It's time to talk about e flea I always look forward to e flea I've been doing these special type of e flea videos ever since 2015 and it's a time that I always look forward to. Whether you're a Nintendo person, Sony person, it doesn't matter. It's always a great time for the whole gaming community to come together to talk about the latest new titles coming out of our favorite game companies that are going to be released whether it be in this year or beyond it's always a great time and this year's E3 was spectacular well wasn't the most spectacular as I was hoping it would be don't get me wrong this E3 was good there were some games that interest me some that you did impressive but based on my own play style and thoughts and games, there wasn't like a whole lot of games that really grabbed me. Games that I didn't feel like I need to play right now. And while I do have 10 games that I am excited to play, it was just really those 10. There was some that's like, that's interesting and some that's like, huh, cool. But there wasn't like a game, there was a whole lot of games that really grabbed me to saying I want to play this now. It just didn't really feel that much. I know there's a lot of people that are excited to play Fallout 76 or Last of Us Part 2 or even Cyberpunk 2077 but those type of games don't interest me and there wasn't like a whole library of games that really caught my eye. But that doesn't mean this E3 wasn't bad. It's always fun to watch the press conferences. Heck, Bethesda's was, had the best conference in my opinion. It was so funny. All of them had a really great time. So here are the 10 games that really caught my attention at E3. And once again, these are just my games. These are just based on my personal playstyle, what I like out of a game. And if you disagree with me, feel free to share your thoughts in the comment section below. You may know which games interested you, which games you're excited that you heard from e -Flea. We all have different playstyles, and it's just a fun time to get together to share gaming cultures and different gameplay types that really makes gaming so bigger than we can possibly imagine. Without further ado, here are the 10 games that I am excited to play that will reveal that E3 2018. And the first game I want to talk about is from the Microsoft conference, and that's Battletoads. Yes, it's coming back. It's going to have a hand-drawn animation style, flea player couch co-op, which is a nice touch, coming out next year. And that's it. Nothing else. It was more of a tease a little bit, saying, yes, we're working on a new Battletoads game. And that's it, they didn't really show any gameplay footage or anything, just the logo, some flashy text, and that's it. I'm not really that upset, but at the same time, I would have liked to see some visual art style, aside from that small bit where the hover bike crashing through the wall. I'm not the biggest fan of Battletoads. I played the first one, and I like it fine. It's challenging, has a great art style, I love the music, even though I don't like the fact that you can punch the other player and cause damage that that gets so annoying. And while I'm not a Battletoads fan per se, I would rather have a new Banjo-Kazooie game, but secretly I was curious as to how a modern day Battletoads would look like. I'm not expecting it to be one of the best games ever made, but I think that seeing Battletoads in a modern day gameplay setting would look pretty interesting. I would love to see how the characters would look in a hand-drawn style in today's uh, visual department and the music would sound great actually to have like a whole bad a rock and roll music in I think it'll be interesting so I am intrigued to see how this new Battletoads will fare up. This next game is a little bit interesting it's not like it didn't start out as I was excited for the game but more or less something that showed up I'll, it's complicated I'll get to it in the end. From the Ubisoft conference they mentioned Starlink Battle for Atlantis I mean Atlas it was announced last year, and much like last year, I kind of skimmed over it for a bit. It didn't look like anything major. It had like a Toy to Life concept where you can build a ship and mount it to the controller, which I was a bit nervous. I'm not expecting the ships to be super duper heavy, but a ship on the controller, it just I was worried that it might add some weight and make it kind of bulky a bit, but that's just me. So I kind of skipped over a little bit. Well. That was until this one part where I saw Fox McCloud and I was like, holy crap, I literally stood up from my computer desk, I hit in my knee on the table and it hurts so much from that. It's not a new Star Fox per se, but rather Fox McCloud will be guest starring in the Nintendo Switch version of Starlink. After my uh, 
fanboy moment there, I uh, had to think about this on two things. For one, I was excited to see Fox McCloud guest star in a Ubisoft game. Ubisoft and Nintendo just have a great relationship. You could tell they love working with each other. So to see this happen really made me happy to see a great relationship with Nintendo and Ubisoft. Of the other hand though, I didn't want to include Starlink in the game just because of Star Fox, because that wouldn't be fair. I would rather be fully invested within the game's original universe and lore and gameplay for me to put on the list. And after looking on further inspection, the game actually looks good. I see a lot of people comparing it to No Man's Sky, which I don't know. Maybe it's due to the exploring each planet and being able to fight different enemies in a spaceship. It looks pretty fun and challenging actually, but I'm putting the game pretty low on the list as I'm still learning bits and pieces about the game even though it looks a lot of fun. And I, I am excited to see Star Fox, but I don't want to put the game higher just because of that. That would be unfair in my opinion. But the game looks fun, even though I still have that worried about that whole ship mounted on a controller being bulky and will get in the way of certain buttons. I am a little bit worried about that, but it looks pretty fun and interesting. So it does. Thank you, Fox McCloud. You, you have my attention. Another game from E Fleet that I was excited to see was Octopath Traveler. I'm not going to talk too much about this game. For one, it's been in development and been showcased ever since January of 2017. Not to mention the fact that the game is coming out pretty soon, in fact July 13th is the official release date for the game. But that still doesn't mean that I don't want to talk about it. I think this game looks gorgeous. I love the HD 2D vibe. Um, the turn-based combat looks to be really fun and intuitive. I'm a little bit nervous of the job class system getting overwhelmed with that. I never really played an RPG that used a job class system. But the game looks really fun and interesting and I'm definitely excited to give it a shot once it comes out next month. Another game that I saw in the Microsoft conference was Tunic. This is something that kind of has been driving me a little bit crazy a bit. Not to say I don't hate these games or anything, if you like the art style that's fine, but I've been noticing they've been getting a lot more realistic looking games. You know like games that don't really have like a unique art style. Games like Just Cause, Cyberpunk 2077, games that have that action pack feel with you can see like the hairlines, the human stuff, just realistic looking games and I'm getting kind of sick of that. That's the reason why I'm not excited for those type of games unless it has like a gripping story that's original and stuff but other than that it's just action set piece games that has that looks like motion capture I don't even know where I'm going with this, but I'm getting sick of just seeing realistic looking games all over. Now I'm not saying there aren't any cartoony games no more, but I wish we had more unique stylized games that really broadens out how much the art direction of gaming can change. And Tunic, yet to really interesting. It's art style simple, but that's one thing I like. It's simple, it looks bright, not too much colors, but the dynamic color shading looks kind of interesting. That little fox character in the game looks really cute and adorable with his little sword and shield going off against enemies. It has a Legend of Zelda vibe to it, but there's nothing wrong with that as long as you have a original personality and do something different and the game definitely lives up to that. And the enemies look threatening, but the combat looks to be pretty intuitive and pretty fun. And the world itself, I think, will look spectacular, and I'm, I'm very curious about it. It looks cute. Next up, we go to the EA conference. I don't have any strong feelings for EA. I don't hate them like a lot of people do, but I don't really play the games that much, so I'm kind of like a mix. While I do have some disagreements with EA's little business decisions and whatnot, I don't like go on hate out on EA like everyone else does. And the conferences aren't really that special to be fair, the last few EA conferences have been handled pretty poorly, not that exciting. However, I have to give EA credit as it helped remind me of a game that I totally forgot by accident. The game in question they revealed was Unravel 2, a sequel to Unravel which came out a few years ago. I'm really happy that they released Unravel 2, not because I played the game and loved it, but rather, I forgot about the game by accident. I think everyone has at least one game that they heard about, but then forget about it as we're distracted by things in life or other games that overtake our expectations. Unravel was one of those games, a yet the cute and charming, but I forgot about it due to so much stuff going on in life. 
But after EA mentioned Unravel 2, it was like, holy crap, I still need to play that. So I got in the game literally a couple days after the EA conference. This is actual gameplay footage of me playing Unravel, and I love it. It's actually a really great game. It's very calming and peaceful, has some really fun platforming elements. The character himself is so cute and innocent, and Unravel just has that atmosphere, that wonderful atmosphere of like trying to retrace memories and all that. And Unravel 2 will play kind of similarly. I heard that it's actually even better than the first one with the whole co-op play and all that. The best part about Unravel 2, you can play it right now. Seriously, go, go turn on the PSN or the Xbox Live Store or PC and you will find out that Unravel 2 is available now. That was the best part of the EA conference. That's one thing I have to give EA credit for with the EA originals. They want to help smaller developers, even if it doesn't fit the line of all the other EA games, to see these small developers to shine to the world like A Way Out and Sea of Solitudes brings a smile to my face to see EA does care about different types of games that can do differently than just typical sports simulations or whatnot. And I'm really happy that Unravel 2 got made. I don't know how many copies the first one sold, aside from me purchasing it, but I'm happy to see that the game has a sequel. And after Unravel 2, you bet I'm going to unravel into Unravel 2. <laughs> Sorry, I had to do that. I thought that was cute. Up next, we got Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. This was revealed a couple weeks ago, but I wanted to include it on my list of games I'm excited to play. I am not a hardcore Pokemon fan. I have strong memories of the Pokemon anime. Heck, I got the original Pokemon Indigo League season box set that has all the episodes minus the um, controversial ones. And my favorite Pokemon game ever happens to be Pokemon Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald. I just love the home region Pokemon. However, I have not really played a single Pokemon game since Diamond. Okay, I'm lying. There's Pokemon Tournament, which I absolutely love. In terms of the main Pokemon series, I haven't really touched the series. In fact, back in E3 uh, 2016, I mentioned I was going to play Pokemon Sun and Moon. I have yet to, as my interest in it has rivered away. And it's a shame, really, because I would like to get back in the series, but it's just not really grabbing my interest. Or the newer Pokemon, as much as I love Papaloo, it has not, it just didn't feel like it captured the magic as the original. Then again, I have a strong nostalgic bond with the original 151 Pokemon, but that's just me. So seeing this somewhat reimagining of the Kanto region games and the combining elements of Pokemon Go and the Core series was, had a mixed reaction a bit. But after you get more into it, it actually looks like a really fun Pokemon game. It's a little bit different from the main Core series, but there's nothing wrong with a little change here and there. This looks like a fun game to really introduce people who are well acquainted with Pokemon Go and bring them into how a core game is played to tie them over for when the next main Pokemon game comes out next year in 2019. And there's a few little elements that I actually do like. I mean, yes, from Pokeballs, I was kind of confused as to how that was going to help level up your Pokemon, but apparently when you do capture a Pokemon, the rest of your party will level up, which I think that is good considering you'll be fighting a lot of trainers throughout the game. The two player option will be a really fun matchup, especially when capturing strong Pokemon you both can throw a Pokeball, which is a nice touch. The game looks absolutely beautiful and how I was think the game would look on the Nintendo Switch, it just looks peaceful and beautiful. And plus my favorite feature about this, you can see the Pokemon, you don't have to worry about wild battles happening every 30 seconds. I know some people like that, I don't. So this is a nice welcome change. So I am interested in how it goes. I don't think it'll be like a super hard game, but I think it might be a fun journey. I think it will be. Plus being able to have a second person join with you aside from Pikachu or Eevee, I think that's a nice touch. So I'm definitely gonna check this one out. Another Nintendo Switch game is Fire Emblem Fleet Houses. Fire Emblem Fates for the 3DS is one of my personal favorite games on that system. I never played any other Fire Emblem game until Fates and I think it was a great start for me. I know this could be some people say, You cannot say you're a fan of Fire Emblem without playing all the other games! Uh, actually, I played one other Fire Emblem game 
It was actually a ROM of Fire Emblem Gaiden that my friend uh, Thomas had on his uh, Nintendo Wii. And it was pretty fun, difficult, but I did enjoy it. So I do like the turn-based strategies of Fire Emblems, and I do love the story. Fate's story was such really good. I love to see both sides of Birthright and Conquest. I haven't played the Revelations DLC yet, but I, I'm excited to give it a try now that I just thought about it now. So when they showcased Fire Emblem Three Houses, I was anticipated to see how this was going to turn out. They didn't reveal too much about the game. In fact, the game is actually going to be released in spring of 2019, as opposed to what they originally were going to say it was going to be released this year. But I can't wait to see how the story is going to be played in this one. Plus one thing I like in this turn based strategy combat, you can actually see a whole entire army with you to add a little epicness to the game. I am definitely am excited for Fleet Houses. I do need to play some more Fire Emblem. I got like Echoes and Radiant Dawn, but I still need to play through them because I get distracted too easily. But rest assured that I am going to play some more Fire Emblem, hopefully before this one comes out so I could be prepared even more. Super Mario Party. I wasn't really expecting a new Mario Party. I mean, I liked it 10. 10 was pretty fun. Me and Black Cross played it on Del Mar Palace once. However, there wasn't like a whole lot of excitement for like a new Mario Party. However, Super Mario Party looks a lot of fun actually. There was a few things that caught my eye. The big one that me and uh, Thomas jumped in joy was no car gameplay. You can actually play like a classic Mario Party game instead of having to group up in one car moving around the board. I like that a lot. I don't know if this could be like an option to where if you do like that you can, I'm not sure, but I, I'm so happy the car's gone. Not saying it was horrible, but it's better the original way. I also saw that you could play as a Goomba, which I think is the cutest thing ever. It's kind of like Seeing the chain chomp holding a tennis racket, this is just adorable. The part that I just had to squeal over was seeing a Goomba trying to ride a bicycle. It was, it was cute. It really was adorable to see. And the mini games, I'm actually really anticipating to see how they turn out. I mean, say what you want about One Two Switch, but one of the things I love about the game is how it used the HD Rumble feature on the Joy Cons, with the whole ball count gameplay and rolling around to unravel the chains on a treasure chest was really fun and I can't wait to see so many interesting gameplay designs or mini games they use with the HD One Bowl. In fact, one of the things that I was really impressed by was that there was a scene in the trailer where this group of teens was in a restaurant and they were trying to figure out how to position the Switch tablets to form like where the tanks would go for this mini game. And once they positioned it, they swiped it and it connected and it was it was mind blowing, it was pretty creative, making you really think what other stuff can they do with the Switch. And that's one thing I think Super Mario Party would do, show some fun more innovative ideals. I mean heck, 1-2 Switch was a fun party game, despite a few shortcomings and the pricing, but this one looks to be really fun and it's actually one Mario Party game I'm excited. In fact, I talk about quite a few times that I might bring back Del Mar Palace Messes about and if I do... I will play this one next. Most of the Nintendo Direct for E3 was focused on Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, hands down going to be the biggest Smash Bros. to date. On one hand, I was thinking it was going to be a port of the Wii U and 3DS combined, and it sort of is, but not at the same time. It's going to have a few familiar stages and gameplay modes, but there's a few different stuff that makes Ultimate different. For one, every single Smash Bros. fighter, ranging from the N64, Melee, Brawl, and Wii U and 3DS are all in one game. So now we can see the returns of veteran fighters like Pichu and Solid Snake join in this crowd of epicness. And we got some new characters as well, such as the Inkling boy and girl from Splatoon, Daisy, and Ridley. I'm not against Ridley as a fighter, but he seems kind of out of place, to me at least. He feels out of place within this fighting game. He's tiny. <laughs> He's shrunk down in size and not saying he won't be bad, but I'm, I'm kind of mixed about having Ridley as a fighter. It just feels like the biggest Smash Bros to date. There is one thing that my friend Nerd Thomas has said. He thinks that this will be the very last Smash Bros. game. And I kind of agree with him on that. Smash Bros. on Wii U is my favorite Smash Bros. game to date. 
we'll see how ultimate goes and it was pitch perfect in terms of controls modes and everything and it's really kind of hard to see how much more bigger smash bros can be so i think sakurai decided to make this and put all the fires into one to make one last hurrah for smash bros I mean, I say there's probably going to be another one, but it seems really close to see that this might be the possible last one with all these characters fighting and seeing how much they can do. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate comes out December 7th of this year, and I think this will be probably the best Smash Bros. game, hands down. Even better than the Wii U as much as I love it that much. Unlike the last few years, I don't have a runner-up list, as again, there wasn't a whole lot of games that really piqued my interest. There was one game, however, and it's kind of funny too. This last game I want to talk about that I'm really excited from E3. I'm, I'm, I have a special relationship with this franchise, but also kind of rocky one. As as the series continued, I was getting confused of where the series was going and was overwhelmed. But thanks to my brother, he helped me explain a few things, and I'm once again happy to jump back onto this franchise. That game in question is Kingdom Hearts Flee. I love the first game from the PS2. The first Kingdom Hearts holds a special place in my heart. <laughs> it was just a game changer to me, the first Kingdom Hearts ones. It's very special to me, and I couldn't possibly be a gamer without it thanks to the first Kingdom Hearts. And I also love Chain of Memories and Kingdom Hearts 2. But afterwards, when the games was going through prequel after prequel, semi-sequel and all that, I was getting overwhelmed with the story and what was the direction the series was going. Not to say that the gameplay wasn't bad, but the story is always the main focus in an RPG. And the game just had this weird story that I was so confused and overwhelmed by that I felt like if I played Kingdom Hearts 3, I just wouldn't get it or be uninterested. That was until when me and my brother was playing the Kingdom Hearts series. Ever since Gosh, how long have we been doing this? I think 2016 was when we started doing Let's Plays on my brother's channel, where we've been getting together to play Kingdom Hearts. And it's a special time, uh, where me and my brother can chit-chat, have fun, and mess about with, and be goofy, and enjoy a fantastic game series. And I feel kind of bad every time when we watch those old videos, as I feel like I was being a jerk, describing that the story was confusing, and I felt like I was being a jerk about it. I know in reality I wasn't, I was just expressing my opinions. However, when we were playing Birth by Sleep, my brother, along with me watching him playing a game, helped me explain the story of certain scenes and aspects and even small details that I didn't even realize. But after playing through Birth by Sleep and Dream Drop Distance, I'm able to understand the direction of the series, the whole essence of darkness and Kingdom Hearts and Zemness and whatnot. It really helped me Playing the games with my brother really shed new light on the series that I have a better appreciation for a very complex story that has some meaning to it. And so now I can officially say I am hyped for Kingdom Hearts Flea. Everything about this game is gonna be amazing. I love the visual style of the game with the Unreal Engine 4. Everyone looks great. Being able to jump into not only the CGI Disney worlds, but jumping into Pixar related worlds with Monsters Inc. and Toy Story just looks incredible and just amazing. I will admit, I was a bit overwhelmed with all the action going on with Sora switching between different keyblades and weapons and all the exploding stuff. But after looking on it, it looks to be really fun and has a lot deeper combat that I hope will be a little bit better than how it was in 2. Instead of that stupid combo killing thing where even though the boss was at his last health you have to do a combo to get rid of him that's gone thankfully plus we finally have a release date for the game january 29th 2019 where we can finally experience the third install actually i lied this is not the third installment but be to enjoy this one game we have been waiting years and years for is very heartwarming and once again, I have to thank my brother for helping me explain a lot of the story. And even though I can't explain it with Jack Crap, I'm happy to now understand everything and the meaning behind all the Kingdom Hearts, even though I still prefer the first one for special reasonings. But still, Kingdom Hearts Flea, my game of E3 2018. I'm so hyped for it. But those are my games of E3 2018 that I can't wait to play. 
I know there's gonna be a few disagreements, but that's okay because we all have different play styles and loves for games that we want to see out of them. So in the comment section below, please share your games of E3 2018 so we can learn and share and and discover from one another about different types of games and genres and how much gaming has evolved. It's always a great time. So thank you guys for watching this special Del Marsha episode. God bless you. And I will see you guys in the next Del Marsha episode. Bye bye. Now if you excuse me, I'm gonna unravel. Unravel? Uh, right now. Actually, I'm serious. I'm actually really want to play Unravel. So excuse me for a moment. <laughs>